Hey everybody, Jim Ellis here, the Unemployed Entrepreneur. Thanks again for watching my videos. Please, if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and then hit that bell and then click all and then that way you'll get notification every time I put out a new video. All right, so we're in my series, if you will. I, I initially started calling it inspirational music, as you can see on the previous video. I'm just trying to think of a better way to do it because let's face it, Inspirational music has this connotation that it's, you know, oh, 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 spiritual and high church pipe organ, that kind of thing. It just, it just has that connotation. It's not negative. It just isn't what I'm going for here. So I'm trying to think of a better name for the series. I had one at one point and then I lost it because, you know, with the hair follicles go the brain cells, you know, that kind of thing. Um, hopefully I'll come up with a better name here as we move forward. Um, but if you didn't see the first video, go back and watch it. Uh, this is just a series of me talking about uh, albums, songs even, artists that inspired me when I was younger. Uh, there's a Facebook post uh, out there or a challenge going on saying post the pictures of the albums that you know made a difference in your life, um, that inspired you, and uh, not to say anything. Well, this is where I actually say something. And uh, this today's episode, part two, if you will, is... Uh, Going back again, here I'm doing it in chronological order. I started off kind of wonky on Facebook because it was a knee-jerk reaction. My third post was Keith Green's No Compromise. Now, there's a lot of songs in that album that did inspire me, like Dear John, Letter to the Devil, which I never learned how to play. Anyway, um, don't know how to do the... Keith Green, I ain't, <clears throat> as you can tell by the hair. Uh, boy, I wonder what his head would look like right now. Anyway, um, yeah, there was Dear John Letter to the Devil. There was Asleep in the Light. Oh, my goodness, Asleep in the Light. What happened to my hair? Do you see? the right key? Do you see? Do you, do you see? Can't think of it. Do you see? Do you see? All the people sinking down. I haven't played it in years. Um... I know this is the sad part. This was the inspiration, and I don't remember these songs anymore, and I need to go back, and I need to learn them. Hey, if your inspiration fell down, you know, if you know what I'm saying? If you lost your inspiration, go back. Go back. Don't stay there, but go back. Let it hit your heart. Let it soak in and learn it again. This is where I'm going with this particular video. You see, that album was a great album. Dear John Letter to the Devil, um, Asleep in the Light. How can they live without Jesus? How can they live without God's love? Um, and my eyes are dry. My faith is old. My heart is hard. My prayers are old. So many good songs. However, I have to back up because the album I should have put was not No Compromise. It was For Him Who Has Ears to Hear, I believe. For Him Who Has Ears to Hear. Because on that album was a song that I, <laughs> and I say this semi-justly, became famous for. I sang it many times in churches, I can honestly say kind of all over the country, you know, just where I visited and stuff. But it's a little song that goes like this. But uh, yeah, I had a blast playing that one. I used to know it a lot better than I do right now. I'm just telling you. Um, one of the, f 
this is just a complete side note. I don't know if you make it into the video, but I remember one time playing it at a church in Ypsilanti, Michigan, First Assembly of God, or First Ypsilanti Assembly of God, excuse me. And um, the bass player said to me, how come you didn't change keys? And I was like, I don't know. I just played it how it was written in the music. I was young. <clears throat> and I alluded to the fact in my previous video about Don Francisco that uh, the music was simplified. Uh, extremely simplified. Back then I didn't realize it because I was a newbie, I was fresh, I was inexperienced. Uh, but the music was just simplified. In fact, there's, uh, it not only is the key change miss missing in that music, as I recall, there's quite a bit of actual music missing in that music. But, you know, because Keith Green was very accomplished, uh, so they had to dumb it down, which they still do today. Uh, in most cases, they'll dumb it down. Um, one of the things they do pretty regularly is they'll put it in lower keys for the average person to sing, and that's no shot to the average person. It's just, let's face it, uh, if there weren't, how do you, how do you, how do I say this correctly? Um, if, if there wasn't an average, there wouldn't be the section that is above average, if you get my drift. Chris Tomlin can sing really, really high, and most churches bring his music down where they can sing it. Um, I sing Chris Tomlin songs where he wrote them, generally. <clears throat> Except, like, you know, How Great Is Our God that's in D-flat slash C-sharp. It's like, just drop it half a step and put it in C. It's so much easier. Um, and then, of course, there are people who do things in B uh, because it's written on a guitar, and, you know, sometimes you move that up to C. But I'm getting overly technical here. The point is that Keith Green was a major inspiration in my life, in my ministry, in um, my music, uh, as you can tell, um, I would play that song pretty regularly, uh, like I said, wherever I was asked to do so. And not only that song, He'll Take Care of the Rest, uh, that album had great songs on it, like uh, You Put This Love in My Heart. Um, there's a beautiful song on it uh, called uh, Song to My Parents. <laughs> Those words are never in the song, of course. But uh, it's a song to his parents who at the time were not saved. I don't know what happened to them, I don't know what became of them after his death and that and all that. Um, but he wrote a beautiful song, just telling them how much he loved them and wanted them to know the truth that there's a heaven waiting for us, and there's only one way to get there. Um, now I mentioned his death. Uh, any of you who don't know who Keith Green was, yes, he died in 1982 in a plane crash. In fact, I'm kind of saddened to say that I never listened to the man. Never, I, I may have heard. A couple of his songs, but I, I never really got into him until after his death. Uh, and so I guess, uh, is in a sense, I'm my stuff has always been kind of a tribute to him. Um, and his wife, Melody, has gone on with their ministry for the last 35, 38 years. Um, uh, she, from what I've seen, I've read his book, I've read her book about him. Um, just fabulous, fabulous couple. Uh, sad story, sad ending. But God has used him mightily even after his death. And uh, anyway, he was definitely a huge inspiration to me and my music. And uh, that there is the story of album number two. Uh, Keith Green, I, pro I posted No Compromise, but it would also include uh, For Him Who Has Ears, as well as several others. Um, <clears throat> when I posted the album the other day, a friend of mine posted that uh, his wife had bought all his stuff. And i uh, pretty sure I have all of it on my computer somewhere, or if not all of it, the vast majority of it. Um, again, a great inspiration. Uh, and you often wonder to this day where he'd be, what he'd be doing if, uh, if he was still around. Um, unfortunately, it's those things that we, you know, it's really easy to go, why God? And, you know, what if? Uh, but there's no way to do it. You know, I mean, we can do it, but it just doesn't do us any good. Um, just thankful that God's in control and he took him, him and his two kids home and the other two or three people who were on the plane at the time. Uh, so anyway, thanks again for watching. Uh, this is probably a short video today, I'm sure, which is fine. I've got, uh, I've got a very busy day ahead of me. Um, again, going back to the unemployed entrepreneur part, uh, I'll be working bite squad again today. Um, going to be putting together a, uh, video, excuse me, a website. I'm going to probably add a page to my website. Uh, regarding videography. I've been encouraged by a recruiter to uh, make myself relevant as well as learn some things regarding Facebook and things for churches and hopefully pursuing a consultant position. We'll see. 
Um, I know it can be done and I know I can do it. I just got to get myself there. So stay with me. Uh, if you got any encouragement for me, please post it. If you like Keith Green, if you got comments about Keith Green, put them in the post below, or excuse me, put them in the comments below. And um, look forward to hearing from you. Look forward to looking forward to the interaction. Remember, the unemployed part of unemployed entrepreneur is never permanent. Mm-hmm.